Hey everyone, Audrey here with another History with Audrey D lesson. Now this lesson is actually an addendum to my Vedas and Ancient India lesson that I recently released. I had so many comments about this particular lesson that I wanted to address a few of them. But first of all, I want to say thank you to everyone who commented, whether it was positive, negative, or just informative. I really wanted to say how much I appreciate the cultural differences and the fact that there were so many of you who wanted to just communicate some of the things that I might have left out of the lesson or things that have shifted over time as far as terminology that's used. That being said, one of the first things I want to address was one of the questions, which was from at man H9105. He asked, what is my qualification that I am lecturing on Hinduism and the Vedas? So there are a few people that commented on this. And quite frankly, my qualification is that I am actually a history teacher. So the reasoning behind this is I'm trying to create content for students, parents, teachers, and anyone who wants to know what would be taught in a US history classroom while also giving a little bit more information than they would find in a textbook. Much of the information found in textbooks that teachers might use in a classroom is not necessarily accurate. Some of the textbooks have information in them that is outdated, theories that are outdated, and because they are textbooks, they take a long time to be updated. So in lieu of that, I wanted to create videos that people could use in order to have more information that they might be able to have a better understanding of different cultures, different types of religions, and things that would be taught in a traditional classroom setting. A little bit more about myself specifically is that I do have a bachelor's in history. I actually have a master's in global sustainability and I have been a history teacher for the past eight years in public school systems. Uh, with that, it comes with a lot of understanding that not everything is able to be found um, readily available, and it takes a lot of research for teachers to be able to know everything and be a potential expert on the subject. I am by no means an expert on any specific subject that I am covering I know that there is plenty that I can learn and that is also why I'm doing this video because I appreciate the comments that were left about things that I forgot or that I just didn't see when I was doing my research. I really want people in the US especially to have more understanding of other cultures because I believe that that is one of the biggest ways that we can create more understanding about other people and also understanding of ourselves. All right, so the next comment I'm actually going to discuss is from Arian Brata, 9188. And this one says that there are many problems with the video. And first of all, he says that Dharma, Karma, and Moksha are not Vedic, that Rita is Vedic. Now, most of the other comments actually say that Dharma, Karma, and Moksha are Vedic and that they are also Hindu and that in this I've actually left one of the core principles out, but I'll get that to that one when I get to that particular comment. Um, so I'm not sure why that particular statement's made. But moving on from that one, he says that the god Mitra, and this sort of relates to one of my other videos where I do talk about the relation or correlation between Iranian gods and some of the Indian gods and how some of the names seem to have been adopted into the Indian or Hindu religion. Uh, this particular person says, the god Mitra related to Iranian Mithra and Roman Mithras was associated with justice and Rita. It also says that the word Rita also meant rituals or rites. Thank you, did not know that. Had not heard of Rita yet in my research. So I do appreciate you adding that in. Secondly, um, didn't understand why I, or did not mention the main theme of the Vedas, or the Rig Veda, I should say, which was the slaying of the evil Asura dragon, um, Virtra, by the thunder god Indra. So again, I was not aware of that, but I, it's also not something that is put into our standards or our learning goals or our learning targets. So certain aspects of the religion, I'm trying to give an overview on, 
However, very happy to create something to where I can do an addendum like this whenever someone has additional information they want to add for me. The third thing that he mentions is the migration theory. So this is mentioned by a few people. Um, migration theories are spread throughout a few of my lessons and by migration theory I'm not talking about invasion theory because the invasion theory was completely discounted. It, it's, it's no longer a valid theory. It was something that someone saw all of the bodies that had been buried in I believe it was Harappa and assumed that there were invaders that came in, killed everybody, and the bodies were buried in haste. That was inaccurate. And unfortunately, that's another aspect that can be found in certain textbooks, which is why I wanted to make sure that I give more information on the levels of migration theory that exists. Now, the Andronova culture is the primary culture that I started to discuss in my later Vedic episode, I believe. And I also discussed some of the migrations in the early Vedic episode, because when we talk about the migrations, I'm not necessarily saying that they all happened after Harappa and Mahenjadaro were created. I'm actually saying that many of them probably happened before Harappa and Mahenjadaro were built. And by that, I mean, Mahenjadaro and Harappa were most likely a combination of cultures. Invasions are not what I'm talking about. I am talking about more of a peaceful migration in which people integrated their cultures that they brought with them into other cultures that were pre-existing in the area, which is also why certain gods or goddesses would be addressed in similar terms, but not be the exact same name for similar gods or goddesses. This happens throughout a number of cultures. It's not new happened with Greeks and Romans as well. Uh, moving on from that, one of the main things that he says is how the Iranian Aryans were more so a warlike people. Yes, they were definitely warlike. They would have been able to defend against any invaders. I actually believe that the Iranians are the, mig the migratory people that I'm discussing along with the Andronova culture which were the ones that created the war chariots. So there are some things that I covered in other lessons that I did not discuss in my Vedas video because I'm trying to also break all of these down in ways that make it more bite size as opposed to having an hour long video to try and show to a class that has a five minute attention span, if that. All right, so one more thing I wanna discuss, uh, D. Duchovny, 2270 wanted to make sure that I say never to use the disgusting word Hindu because it's called Sanatan Dharma. Now, Sanatan Dharma um, is actually, from the research that I did after reading this comment, a term that began to be used in the 19th century. Again, I'm covering ancient history right now, so the reasoning behind most of the terminology that I'm using has to do with how it's portrayed in our classrooms and the key terms and things that students really need to know. So say I am more than happy to, put, to actually relay any other information, especially as I continue on, if people want to give me more information as to different terms that are used more often now. However, one of the things I will say is if it is not in direct relation to the ancient aspects of civilization at this point in time, they're not key terms that I am necessarily going to be using as direct relation to my topics. Now, as we move further into modern history, modern world history, I will absolutely be more likely to do that. Um, when I do cover my video that is on Hinduism and the caste system, which will be one of my next videos that I do, I will make sure that I do include this term because it will help to cover things and also bring it more to a modern day standing, which is one of the learning goals that we have in classrooms is to make to where students can actually understand the correlation between past events or past societies, uh, ancient cultures, and where they developed into. 
And the final one that I'm going to discuss is again from tectonic underscore shorts. So he talks about how at 315, I described only three pillars of Hinduism. So I said that there's one more that's called Arth or Arth. Sorry if I'm pronouncing it incorrectly. I apologize. Uh, and that it means the pursuit of material wealth and prosperity in a reasonable and ethical way. So thank you again for the information. I really appreciate it. I want to be able to have this type of information in my videos. And sometimes, again, it doesn't always come up in the research, especially because I am looking at a number of sources and it does take a long time to get through everything. Now, he goes further to make sure that I understand that Dharma is duty that must be followed. Karma is pleasure or Kama is pleasure both in body and mind, and then moksha is released from the cycles of rebirth. Now, he also states how moksha is the ultimate goal of any soul to cut itself from the cycles of rebirth, and in Hinduism, the place where the soul reborn is known as death realm or the sorrow realm, where they're attracted by the maya or materialism. And then they forget that their real goal is to get liberated and become part of the one unity which would be the brahmin from what i understand and experience the real self and infinite bliss so he makes the connection between what we would call the matrix and the maya so i really find that interesting i am super appreciative that you added that information in I find it fascinating that we do have so many cultural differences and again, not all of my research is going to bring up the same things that people who are raised within a culture would actually be more privy to because again, you are raised within that culture. So I appreciate all of you for putting in your comments and letting me know anything that I left out of the video. I do hope you enjoy this follow up video. Thanks for watching again, everyone. Have a great day.